Today we're going to be talking about this guy. Well, not exactly Spongebob, but you'll see. What are peripherans? What is the phylum periphera? What lays under the phylum periphera? Well, today we're going to be talking about peripherans, and peripherans are sea sponges. They are the simplest kind of multicellular organism or animal on the planet. So first we must ask a couple questions. How many species are there? What are the defining attributes? And what is their importance? Well, I'll go in depth into each of those right now. We'll start out with how many species are there? There are 8,000 species of sea sponge and almost 100% of them are marine. There are a few exceptions though found in freshwater ecosystems. Of these 8,000 species, there are four classes Demospongi, Calcarea, Hexactanelletta, and Homo scleromorpha. And if we take it one step further, there are 16 families in Periphera. I will go into detail about each of the classes in later videos, but for now we want to begin with what makes a sponge a sponge, or in other words, a peripherin a peripherin. Next, what are the defining attributes? What makes a peripherin a peripherin? Well, for starters, sponges do not have nerves, muscles, and they are oftentimes asymmetrical with a few exceptions. No organs are present at all for respiratory, digestive, and excretory functions either. But an animal as simple as this still has upwards of 20 different kinds of cells in a single one. They are surprisingly successful for the simplest animal on earth. They play a large role in aquatic ecosystems a lot of the time. Let's take a look at the anatomy of a sea sponge, shall we? The empty space within the sponge is called the spongoseal. There are flagellated cells which correspond to the spongoseal called coanocytes. These coanocytes have a few hypothesized functions. One, they can create currents within the sponge for circulation of water. Two, they help in obtaining food. And three, they can catch sperm for later use in reproduction. Archaeocytes are cells within the sponge that have several potential functions. One major one being food digestion, getting rid of waste, and even producing sperm or eggs. Spicules or spongin are a form of support within the mesoheal layer of sponges. Spicules and spongin are very different in composition, but they assist the sponge in its shape and structure, and potentially they are a form of defense against predators. Sponges do not move at all. They are sessile creatures, so they rely on water flow for their survival. Reproduction and obtaining food all comes from water flow. Water flows into a sponge with the help of porocytes and ostea, which are holes in a porocyte that allow water to flow into the sponge, where it is moved along through the spongoseal with the help of coanocytes, and then it leaves the sponge through the large opening or openings called the oscula or osculum. To demonstrate this, here is a video of a sponge pumping water with the help of food coloring or dye to help you visualize this process. As you can see, they're very efficient at pumping water. And sponges can filter large amounts of water in a single day. And some sponges can reach a meter in both diameter and also in height. Sponges can reproduce asexually and sexually, although the ones that reproduce sexually are hermaphrodites. Why are sponges important? Other than being used to wash dishes, of course, what other use do sponges have? Well, they are also a home for several marine animals. For example, some shrimp species live within 
sponges and use them as a refuge. In addition to this, they also provide food for, for some fish species. They have also been used in producing medicines. For example, in the 80s, a sponge was used in the development of a drug for HIV patients. It has also been used for testing drugs for herpes and other illnesses. Sponges are much more important than you may have previously thought. Well, thank you guys for watching this first installment of my new series, Navigation Through Ocean Classification. And I hope you all enjoyed, and I hope you're ready to learn some more about the different kinds of sponges. In my next video, I will be talking about one of the classes, and I will be making a video for each sponge class. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to catch you guys again next time.